What if Frostbite replaced Freeze in competitive Pokemon? Every Thursday, we look at competitive Pokemon ideas that would change the game. You can participate by commenting your idea in the weekly community post and the most liked ideas will get discussed. First, we have a discussion about Frostbite and Drowsy in competitive Pokemon. For those of you who don't know, Frostbite and Drowsy are two new mechanics introduced in Pokemon Legends Arceus. Frostbite replaces Freeze and is a special equivalent of Burn. Moves that used to be able to freeze now cause Frostbite at an increased rate. How would that change the game? First of all, no random freezes, that's a win already. Freeze is probably the worst mechanic in Pokemon. It's uncompetitive and there is no counter for it. You can't outplay the freeze and it happens at such an annoying rate. It's only a 10% chance, but when it happens, it's almost like a one-hit KO. That's how powerful it is. You basically have to hope you don't get frozen, and then if you do, you have to hope you get unfrozen. You end up as a sitting duck. In Generation 1, when you couldn't unthaw from freeze, a freeze clause was put in place where you can only get frozen once. Some strategies in Generation 1 even involve putting yourself in a position to use Blizzard and Ice Beam as much as you can. In later generations, once Freeze became something you can thaw out of, the Freeze Clause was removed, but it's still an incredibly annoying situation. But besides dumb luck, Freeze is a tool that beats bulky Pokemon probabilistically, and this is best explained with an example. Before Kyurem was banned, it would love to spam Ice Beam, and depending on EV spreads and items, Clefable could take around 45% of damage, so on paper it can switch in. But when Clefable tries to switch in, it's still risky because every time it uses Soft Boil to heal and Curum stays into Ice Beam, it's not only risking a critical hit, it's risking getting frozen too. The chance of either getting frozen or crit after 5 Ice Beams is around 53%. Multiple Ice Beams in a row make Clefable very risky. Similarly, Ice Beam spam can try to beat bulky sweepers like Rhinoclus. This doesn't affect team building, no one is going to say they have Rhinoclus covered because they have Ice Beam, but it's an in-battle thing to know that the worst case scenario, you do have the option of going fishing for a freeze. Losing freeze makes bulky sweepers just a little bit better because they don't have to worry about the probabilistic strategy to beat them. As for Frostbite itself, I think it could be very interesting, but also very dangerous. Unfortunately, there is no indication that there would be a Will-O-Wisp equivalent for Frostbite, which means Frostbite would be limited to only secondary effects. Ice Beam is a relatively common move in every tier in competitive Pokemon, so Frostbite is not an ice type only thing, you will be seeing it a lot in general. Steel and Water would be the main switch-ins because they resist ice and are generally seen on walls because they are good defensive types. Steel types are usually physical attackers, so they won't mind the special attack drop, but because they are immune to toxic, any way of getting residual damage on steel types is great. You would rather have a burn on a steel type, but doing that is a lot harder because a common way of burning a steel type is through Scald, but most steel types don't beat water types and they would switch out of Scald anyway. Frostbite would be good because steel types want to switch into ice types. Overall, it's a net positive for an easy way to get residual damage on a steel type. Frostbiting a water type could also be good as a lot of water types are special attackers. Frostbiting also has some very dangerous implications though. If you frostbite a physical attacker, they cannot get toxic anymore. This could be huge as a lot of sweepers would gladly take a 1 by 16th damage every turn if it meant they were immune to toxic. Also, and this might be the most important, physical attackers might become a lot more common than special attackers. Traditionally, special attackers have not had to deal with Intimidate or Burn, but they have had to deal with Blissey and Chansey, who can wall any special type attack. That held the balance. Physical attackers didn't have to deal with Blissey, but they did have to deal with Intimidate and Rocky Helmet and Burns, and vice versa. Frostbite changes that balance because special attackers now have to worry about Blissey and Frostbite. Overall, this tilts the scale in favor of physical attackers because they don't have to worry about as much. But this point, I'm not extremely confident in. Would Frostbite even be common enough to cause this much of a change, to make physical attackers completely superior? Let me know down in the comments below what you think about Frostbite and would it be that overpowered or that metagame changing? I am not sure myself. Now let's talk about Drowsy. Drowsy replaces Sleep and gives you a 50% chance to be unable to move, and you take increased damage on attacks. You cannot switch out of Drowsy, it is different from Yawn. First of all, I think this makes a lot of sense because it never made sense to me how a Pokemon could be getting pummeled and just sit there sleeping, you know? But competitively, Sleep was one of the more powerful status conditions because of how valuable turns are. Turns where you can cause damage are probably the most valuable currency after Pokemon themselves. So 50% chance instead of a 100% chance of not being able to move is a huge difference and taking increased damage isn't enough to change that. Another problem is that Sleep had a guaranteed first turn sleep. That means you can sleep a Pokemon you are weak to because you know you cannot be touched. 
But with drowsy, there's only a 50% chance that happens, and oftentimes it may not be worth the risk and you would rather switch out. Drowsy can be more annoying, however, because it's more luck to deal with. In the worst case scenario, because drowsy lasts longer, it can be stronger than sleep, something that was already one of the best strategies. I would actually not be surprised to see a drowsy clause similar to the sleep clause that currently exists, and I do think it would be very common if it was unrestricted. Drowsy could even get banned because in the worst case, it's a much stronger sleep and it's very RNG reliant, it's very luck dependent. Another interesting aspect is rest sleep talk Pokemon. If rest causes drowsy instead, there's no need to use a move like sleep talk, which means you can fit another coverage move. This could be valuable for something like Snorlax. Snorlax often ends up in an uncomfortable position because it wants so many moves. It wants a move to hit ghost types and a move to hit steel types. Not having to use Sleep Talk means it's easier to fit a coverage move on Rest Snorlax. Snorlax is okay with taking more damage from Drowsy because it already has a high special defense and can use Curse to boost its defense stat. There are many Rest Talk Pokemon that would benefit from Drowsy. Another example is Calm Mind Rest Sleep Talk Suicune. Suicune has high physical defense and improves its special defense with Calm Mind. If it didn't need to use Sleep Talk, it could use Ice Beam to hit Grass types or Roar for other setup sweepers. Interestingly, Spark, Volt Tackle, and Wild Charge can remove drowsiness, but those aren't relevant moves in competitive Pokemon. Drowsy Pokemon are also less likely to act in Hail, but the situations where both Hail and Drowsy overlap are relatively rare, besides Alolan Ninetales using Hypnosis. What do you think about Drowsy? Would it be overpowered? Let me know down in the comments below, because a big part of Theorem on Thursday is seeing all the good ideas you guys come up with. What's interesting though is that Freeze and Sleep are the two most powerful status conditions and it looks like they've deliberately tried to tackle it. Frostbite is definitely a worse version of Freeze for example, so they are definitely looking and trying to balance something. But it's unclear what the intention of these changes are. Are they using Legends Arceus as a testing ground? Are these mechanics even going to be implemented in a main series game in the future? Maybe it's just a one-off thing they wanted for fun. It's important to note that the battle system for Legends Arceus is itself different from the main games. If, and that's a big if, these mechanics get ported over to a main series game, will there be any modifications? For example, just how much damage is increased on a drowsy Pokemon? How often will the frostbite rates be? Will there be an increase in frostbite causing moves or drowsy causing moves? These are all questions we can only speculate and unfortunately these questions are very relevant. The damage increase on a drowsy Pokemon is huge. I've assumed it to be something small like around 10-20% to 20 to be reasonable, but if it's something like 50%, that's probably a ban-worthy strategy because it's just insane. If Frostbite gets its own moves like an equivalent to Will-O-Wisp, Frostbite could be even stronger than we've speculated so far. After all, these are all just theories. That's it for today's Theory on Thursday, but make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next community post where you can submit your ideas. This is important because if you don't subscribe, you probably won't see the community post and you will miss out.